Good morning, everybody. Uh, do we commence this? Yeah. So, good morning, everybody. You are welcome to the first session, which is about COVID-19. Are we done with COVID-19? Yes, but no. Contractually and legally, we are still on board. Minimum till end of 2023. Minimum, minimum. Okay. So, COVID-19 claims. Let let me start, yeah, let us start on Slido. This is interactive session. We are not on YouTube channel to hear um, something. This is interactive session. We have to hear from each other. Uh, we'll start the first call, yeah? So just use the barcode and you can vote. Do you consider that, let us get into the, jump into the conclusion? I don't wanna do that, but um, let me ask the question. Is it force majeure? You guys all participated in claims. Is it exceptional event? What is force majeure? Is it defined in common law? Is it defined in civil law? I don't know. Let us see. Okay. Uh, okay, 13 voted till now, 15, 16. Actually, there should be third choice. Neither this nor that. Maybe. Okay. Moving to the second bowl, please. Sophie? Yeah. Have you participated in a claim regarding COVID-19 circumstances or event in any type of contract, FedEx, AIA? NEC, JCT. Okay, 22. Okay, yes. So third and last bull, please. Are you a contractor, an employer, or an engineer? An engineer means the contractual engineer who is administering the contracts, not a civil engineer or mechanical or whatever. Okay. A contractors, we have many contractors here. I learned this ball from my teacher who is sitting on this table, Mr. Sebastian Hawk. <laughs> okay. Ah, most of audience are contractors. Okay, then we'll move into the presentation, Sophie. Okay. Let us start. I won't jump into the conclusion. I, I won't answer the question. Is it force majeure? Is it exceptional event? What's happening? Okay. What's written in the, we will address mostly the FedEx forms of contract, but we will address little bit the JCT and the NEC. Okay. So what is the difference between epidemic and pandemic? What is written a seal in the, in the FedEx forms of contract? Can we have the mic? Can we have the mic? It's epidemic. Correct answer, it's epidemic. So no pandemic. In the NEC, in the JCT, in the FedEx forms of contract, the new rainbow suites 2017, red, yellow, silver, is it pandemic? What is the definition of pandemic? What is the difference I see between epidemic and pandemic? Yeah. If, if someone, yeah. Okay, so who's defining pandemic? I said it's pandemic. There is a new disease called pandemic, if you want to use the mic. Yeah, so WHO is defining the pandemic when it is the, the spread of, of the diseases everywhere in the whole countries. Um, and the WHO said it's a pandemic, it's a pandemic. Epidemic is, is not a pandemic. This, this is the difference between epidemic and pandemic. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, what are the effects as most of you participated in COVID-19 claims, what are the effects of COVID-19 on the construction field? Supply chain, I ordered some marble from Italy and there are a lot of issues. There is a delay of four months. There is a delay in, of four months. How, how, how can I get this? It is on the critical path of the project, the longest cr critical path of the project. It delayed the project drastically. I submitted a claim, but the engineer is denying. Okay, the engineer may accept. Okay, accept based on what? Is it written in the contract? Are you entitled? Okay, you are entitled. 
are you entitled for EOT? EOT means extension of time. You are. Are you entitled for cost? Oh, sorry. Are you entitled for profit? Come on. Okay. Let us address this in this session. Delays regarding HSSE. HSSE means safety. Okay. Restriction. Come on. Don't set. Keep, keep a distance like a meter or two meter between your guys in the project in the construction. Um, this guy got Corona. Ten of my employees of the staff got Corona COVID-19. So there is disruption on the project. There is a lot of impact, drastically impacted the program. Okay, the project has been delayed for four, five months because of this. Okay, delays by authority. On some jurisdictions, um, let me say a practical example. Okay, in Jordan, um, there was um, shutdown, and there was new laws introduced by the government. They said, you have to pay the salary for the employees. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have blah, blah, blah. And they used an old law, okay, 1994, blah, 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 etc. cetera. Um, so can we say that our claim will be based on the change in legislation or change in law? We will address this as well. Okay, so disruption. What is the most, have anyone succeeded in a disruption claim in this conference? Yeah, I see. Okay, great. The most difficult claim to prove is the disruption claim. What is disruption claim? I have a project here, high rise building near Pi, near this hotel. And on the approved program, it is 30 million working hours. Finally, as of today, we have 40 million. So there are disruption of 10 million. This is inaccurate. No, I'm absolutely wrong. Okay, so you have to prove that the lost KBI, which is uh, productivity, we lost 10 million hours. Maybe, maybe your guys are stupid, they are not working. Why you are putting this in a claim? Maybe you are responsible for 4 million and I am responsible as an employer for 5 million. Also the 5 million, prove it. What is your contractual and legal entitlement for this? Legal, have I done a mistake? No. We are talking contractually. Why you are talking legal? You are mixing things up? No. There is a legal requirement for the claim in the new rainbow suites. And if the contractor is not adding that, he will be exposed to sanction and consequences. Legal, legal, okay? That's why our guys, we are an engineers. I am uh, an engineer, engineer background. I'm not a lawyer. We have to understand minimum the construction law which is in civil law jurisdictions, only 20 to 30 clauses in the law. What is decennial liability? What is how to deal with decennial liability? What is impossibility? What is absolute impossibility? What is timely, timely impossibility? What is partial impossibility? These are addressed in civil law jurisdiction. Okay. How to deal with COVID-19 events? Okay. I'm putting as a piece of cake, step by step, how to deal with that. Okay, step number one. COVID-19 commenced. Today is 17 March 2019. COVID-19 commenced. Oh my God, okay. Step one, check your contract. Open your contract. Check if your contract includes epidemic or pandemic definition. Like if you have the 1999 FedEx Rainbow Suite, of course you have uh, epidemic, of, of course, okay. Uh, step two, check you have force majeure clauses in your contract. What I'm doing these days in the contracts, I'm signing a lot of contracts, reviewing, drafting a lot of contracts these days. I'm actually from Jordan, but I operate, I work in, in the biggest consultancy company in Saudi Arabia. And you know, Saudi Arabia, there are, let me not exaggerate, trillion or hundred millions construction projects. In our company, we have a revenue of 700 million, Saudi Real, 800 million. I am the corporate contracts manager and advisor. Uh, I have a lot of contracts managers under me, uh, contract administrators. So I'm telling you my practical experience. Again, I don't like to give YouTube a session or, or whatever. So check force majeure clauses. Do you have force majeure clauses in your contract? Do you have something called exceptional event? So 
We are looking for the contractual entitlement. Okay. Step three, identify the impact. Oh, I got COVID-19, but no impact. Then please sit down. Please sit down, relax, okay? <laughs> Nothing going on. So it's not automatically when you have COVID-19 event that you are entitled for a claim. There should be incurred impact, okay? Or incurred damage. Fine, then step four, determine, determine the entitlement contractually and legally. You should know the minimum of legal clauses in the jurisdiction under the contract, the applicable law, the applicable law. So are you entitled to claim time? Time plus cost, time plus cost plus profit, whatever, in your contract. So open your contract, review the clauses, and ask the experts when it, when it is necessary. Okay. Then, you know, in most forms of contract, we have barring clause. What is barring clause? Anyone knows what is barring clause? If you are not issuing a notice within 28 days in FedEx forms, your claim is barred. What is the meaning? That you lost your entitlement for cost and time because you breach a material obligation, which is the only barring clause in 1999 suite in the red book, in the yellow book, in the silver book, okay? So you have done a material breach to your obligation, and this is the only barring clause in the 1999 suite. I'm, I'm not getting into, uh, into the 2017 New Rainbow Suite because there is other complications in this. So, issue notice. When I was a contractor in 2010, I issued around 1,000 notice. So, notice. Okay, there is barring clause. If, not, if, if I'm not issuing this notice, what will happen? I will work with no cost, with no time. This is serious. Okay? And the legal drafting of a barring clause it is, it is crystal, no argument. There is a statement that the contractor uh, lost his right and the employer is relieved. Okay, step five. So we issued a notice. We followed the contract mechanism, which is submitting the claim itself, the detailed particular. Okay, now, I have to clarify something before going into this slide. FedEx changed the force majeure clause in the new rainbow suites. Why? Why? Because, you know, with some jurisdictions, especially in the common law jurisdictions, uh, it's preferable not to say force majeure because it is undefined term in some jurisdictions. So FedEx decided to keep it as exceptional event. Why I'm saying that? Because when I'm saying exceptional event under FedEx, it's not the exceptional event under civil law jurisdiction. It is total two different categories, okay? So, what is force majeure? What's, what is exceptional event? Fine, what is force majeure? Force majeure, what's happening with force majeure? In any civil law jurisdictions, when it is impossible for you to work, we start thinking about relief, relieving you from your obligation. All your obligation, or corresponding obligation, corresponding obligation. So you are impossible, you have impossibility to work in this area, but this area, you are okay. So your obligation in this area, you have a relief. Maybe it is timely relief, partial relief. Maybe it is absolute, total relief, okay? In civil law jurisdictions, there is, uh, they mentioned in, on some civil law jurisdiction the absolute impossibility, but on si some civil law jurisdiction like Jordan, Kuwait, they mentioned the partial impossibility, which means partial relief, and the time impossibility. Okay, so impossible to work in civil courts beyond control. This is very important legal phrase. It is beyond my control. Unable. I am unable to perform my obligation in this area. I am really unable. Okay? Fine. So, impossibility. Fine. In general, the force majeure, in general, to be accurate, if you get something, you will get time, but no cost. It, def it depends on the civil law jurisdiction. So, it depends on the contract drafting and applicable laws. But as a common, we can say, if you got, you will get time, as a common. Uh, force majeure clauses are not typical. So you have 
to get in the, into the bespoke contract, if it is FedEx form of contract, if it is NEC, if it is JCT, whatever, you have to read it very carefully. And I saw a lot of stupid things in the contracts I'm reviewing about force majeure, okay? Um, in which uh, it created a lot of disputes rather than resolving disputes. So please be careful while you are drafting a contract and writing a force majeure clause. Fine, so force majeure, uh, what's written on some contracts, including FedEx form of contracts? What's written there? The following are, that's why technical writing in the contract drafting and contracts management is very important. While you are saying, hello, Mr. Engineer, I am entitled, I'm submitting to you a claim for cost and time. This means conjunction. You need cost and time. When you are writing and slash or, so you are looking either for cost or for time or for both. Okay, so what's written here in the FedEx forms of contract? It's written FedEx clause may include, which means it's not only for these events. So it's open gate for you to include COVID-19. If other circumstances are in place, then. So what I'm telling in this slide, please mind, whenever mentioned not limited to or like, okay? Um, there, there is a, a manual in FedEx called FedEx Risk Manual. Um, in this manual, I, I, I don't have that slide. It's advising uh, the users of FedEx forms of contract not to use uh, uh, some phrases um, openly, like, like don't use these, clause, uh, these phrases unless it is necessary. Like what? Like not limited to while you are draft, uh, drafting a contract and using and drafting a liability clause. Okay, you are liable for delay damages or whatever for clause so and so. If you are delayed, you will get delayed damages with a cap of 20%, but there are exclusions. Exclusion means open liability, open wide liability, okay? So we have to be careful. So please mind when it's written, not limited to or like. Ah, sorry, I got a question. Is COVID-19 force majeure? So to answer this question, let me answer other questions. Let me ask other questions. Have COVID-19 event prevented the party from performing his contractual obligations? Prevented is very important phrase, okay? In FedEx New Rainbow Suite, they emphasized on the prevention principle, plus in the common law jurisdiction, the prevention and hindrance is a legitimate foundation and ground for the claims. Be careful. Have, has COVID-19 event prevented the party from performing his contractual obligation? Is contract wording entitling eligibility? Is it really impossible to perform or only difficult? What is this? Why I'm writing these questions? Difficult in civil law jurisdiction means, see, in this area, it is, it is difficult for me to work. The engineer said to me, you have to follow the COVID-19 restriction. So in this area, I can't uh, allow more than two guys to work in. So rather than doing this job in five days, I have to do it in a month's time. Okay? Okay, so fine. It's difficult for me to work. Oh, my God. Where is the marble? Call the procurement engineer. Ah, Marble is coming from Italy as per the contract. And there are a lot of issues with the cargo. Oh, then what? Then, but still you are, you are able to work here. So we call this in civil law jurisdiction, exceptional event, okay? Exceptional event. It's hard and it's tough for me to work in this area, but I can work. So what is the difference between this and the force majeure? The force majeure, it is impossible for me to work in this area. It is absolute impossibility or timely or partially. Are these the only prerequisite to say it's a force majeure? No, we'll come into that. Okay, so contractual notice to be followed by detailed particular or a claim, then cost, time, profit. Okay, so how do I draft a contractual notice? Contractual notice, the notice has been defined in the new form of contract with capital N. No more adding in an RFI or minutes of meeting or whatever. You have to clarify that this is a notice and it is a defined term in the new suite um, form of contract 2017. Okay. So I wanna 
you said that you'll make it a piece of cake for us to prepare a claim for COVID-19. So I gave you six steps how to start. Open your contract, see the contractual entitlement, legal, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to repeat. Okay, so how to draft a notice? Is this mandatory to mention it is a pandemic by WHO? No. I'm telling you the way. I, I drafted a lot of claims. I responded for plenty of claims for COVID-19. As I said, I'm managing the, the head office and more than 200 sites, and most of them submitted claims in this regard. So be positive and state that you are doing reasonable, again, technical writing, reasonable efforts to mitigate delays. Is the contractor obliged to do mitigation for the whole project, whole delay? No, no. He is, he is obliged to mitigate delays for his delays plus reasonable efforts to mitigate others' delays. Okay, you have to mention clearly there will be a delay. There is, uh, uh, you have to, to read the clause carefully, again, okay? Like if you have a delayed instruction from the engineer or from the, uh, or delayed uh, drawing from the engineer. We will go to related clause from the FedEx form of contract. We find that in the notice itself, you have to mention four things. Otherwise, you are not fulfilling your obligation in the notice itself to the engineer. Okay. Then define anticipated delay impact like. What is your problem? Is it in supply, in labor, in staff, working hours? Mention the likely risk of shutdown. State the phrase beyond control. Of course, it's not mandatory to state it. But I'm telling you, how do I do this from my practical experience? Reserve the right contractually and legally. In every jurisdiction, either it is the same, not the same, more than one civil law, okay? I have civil jurisdiction in Jordan, in Kuwait, in UAE, etc., in France, in Spain, okay? In each jurisdiction, there are differences, okay? So you have to be aware about the applicable law and the jurisdiction. And don't be, um, don't feel it is like you consult your lawyer when it is necessary, okay? Fine. Even if contract stated the right, it shall be actual damage. I kept one full slide for this because it is very important. Half of the claims submitted, there, there is no damage. Come on, there is no delay. After three days, I told you, shut down the, the site. It's wet, shut down. But after that, I told you comments and I assisted you and helped you till extreme. There was no delay. And that three days, you could mitigate, okay? Fine. So civil law jurisdiction. I'm giving some examples. In the UAE, civil code. Qatari, civil code. Also Kuwait, civil code. Do we have a defined term for force majeure? Do we have in the UAE a seal? Defined term? It is not well defined. We can, I added some clauses. Yeah, 273, article one. I added some clauses where you can legally base your case. But it is, is it well defined, force majeure? No. In the common law jurisdiction, I'm not speaking today about the common law because I'm not an expert in the common law. I know the basics of common law. That's why this session about civil law jurisdictions rather than common law. So in the common law, there is a term well defined as force majeure. Okay. So these are some articles uh, from civil law jurisdiction. Okay. Claim ground is impossibility rather than difficult disruption, um, increased cost. This is, a, you have two way to address the COVID-19 claim. Okay, way number one, force majeure. Way number two is exceptional event. So we are saying in the slide, if it is really impossible to work, you have likely force majeure case, you have likely, but there are nine prerequisites to say it's a force majeure. We will come into that. Okay. Jordan civil law jurisdiction, Article 247. I'm giving you example of that. In contracts binding on both parties, both parties, so we have two parties. Is the engineer party of the contract? Is it? No. We have contractor and employer. A force majeure supervenes, which makes the, the performance of the contract impossible. I'm not, this is not my slide, this is copy based between two brackets, okay, from civil code. The corresponding obligation shall cease, and the contract shall be, oh my God, I don't want to read that, and the contract will be, what? 
automatically cancel. This is civil code. This is not me, okay? Which means if you have absolute impossibility, you cannot work. This site, this high-rise building totally canceled from the government. You cannot work. So it is seized the corresponding obligation. Corresponding, only corresponding obligation shall cease and contract shall be automatically canceled. In the civil law jurisdiction, you have to keep in mind, there are two ways of termination, even by law, which we call it uh, by law or by mutual agreement. Okay, so in the case the impossibility is partial, the civil law jurisdiction of Jordan is uh, defined three ways of impossibility. One is absolute, which means automatic cancellation of the contract, and one partially, like the example I gave you, for this part of, of the project, it's impossible for me to work. So the corresponding obligation here has been seized, okay? Okay, then there is no more restrictions. Okay, please come on and work and submit your claim. Okay, what is timely? Timely impossibility. Timely impossibility, which means we have for certain duration impossibility to work in this certain area. All civil law jurisdiction defined impossibility as absolute and timely and partially, no. No. In civil law of Jordan, they defined Kuwait civil jurisdiction, yeah, to certain limit. But other law jurisdictions, they said absolute impossibility, not partially and, okay. What is Article 273.1? It is the same. I don't want to read that. This is from other civil code, which is UAE. Okay, so in disruption claims, what was the cause of disruption? It is resources and equipment. So going to the form of FedEx form of contract, Rainbow Suites, I will address here the 1999 suite plus the latest school, latest technology, which is what? The new Rainbow Suite of FedEx, which is 2017. What it said? I'm giving you as a crystal closet to use it in your claim. In 1999, Red Book, of course you can use 20.1, which is the claim procedure in FedEx form of contract. You can issue the notice followed by detailed particular. The engineer will respond within 42 days. And when the engineer determine the claim, can anyone answer this question? If I have Red Book 1999, I submitted a claim. Okay, and the claim I submitted, okay, 1st June, and after, assume, 42 days, which is 12 July, I submitted detailed particular. After 42 days, the engineer responded, disapprove or approve. So after the approval of the engineer in FedEx forms of contract, Red Book 1999, do the engineer has to determine in clause 3.5? He said approve, come on, you are complicating things. Yes? I see you want to. Yes. Yes, this is very important. So the engineer shall, shall, shall in the interpretation, even in the new rainbow suite, in the interpretation, defect, uh, FedEx, sorry, uh, defined in the interpretation clause, what are the differences between shall and may? Shall means obligation, me, may means it's my choice. Like advance payment, if I want to talk to the bank, uh, reduce the bond for the contractor, it's my choice. It's not shall. Okay, so the engineer shall issue a determination. One of the things which, which I, did, I don't like in the, in the 1999 Rainbow Suite is that there is no time frame for the engineer to issue the determination after the response, which is approve slash disapprove. Okay, back to the subject. Clause 8.4D which is talking about um, the supply of personal goods, uh, if there is unforeseeable delay, plus clause 17.3, employer risk, and clause 19.1. It depends on your case. Okay, so what are the nine things? You said there are nine things, prerequisites for force majeure. What are they? Okay, four in the civil law jurisdiction, four in the FedEx forms of contract, and one is the government. If you got the four in place in the FedEx forms of contract, plus four in civil law jurisdiction, plus government said, hello, guys, ladies and gentlemen, it is force majeure. It is a force majeure. 
then it is a force majeure. Otherwise, write it, draft it in your contract, it is a force majeure. In the new contracts, for me as a consultant, I'm adding COVID-19 under force majeure clause. It's a crystal, okay. There are pros and cons for this, okay. I'm aware of this. Even in the, in the um, prestigious projects, we added separate clause, full uh, clause about the COVID-19. Okay, what are the clauses? Okay, I'm running out of time. Ah, beyond party control, number one. Is it really beyond your control? Yeah, yes, sir. Second one, which such party could not reasonably have provided against before entering the contract? When you sign the contract on tender stage, okay? Uh, which having arisen such party could not reasonably avoided or overcome? Till now, I'm fine, okay? This is COVID-19. Last one, which is not substantially attributable to others. There are some overlap between these conditions and the civil law jurisdiction, like beyond control uh, and, and other terms. Okay, fine. Other employees of the contractor and subcontractor, these, these are the terms of, uh, okay, fine. Unless government statement that COVID-19 is a force majeure, then employer may argue. How the employer is arguing? I'll come into that. Okay, employer argument. Employer will tell you, I am fully competent contractually. You said it's a force majeure, right? No, it's not. You were working. It was hard for you to work because you did not follow the COVID-19 restrictions 25 of your staff went home because they got COVID-19. Yeah, because of you, not because of me. I'm the employer. Other thing, um, it was difficult for you to work. I, I admit that, okay? But it was not impossible to work. I am aware that the marble delayed for four months and I am aware that you have a lot of disruption, delays here and there, but it was not impossible. Please don't talk to me about force majeure case. Talk to me as exceptional event, like uh, civil law jurisdiction, I'll discuss that with you. Claim shall be proved with actual damages. So again, it's not recognized in English law, the force majeure. Uh, force majeure applicability under JCT is arguable. Mitigation, is it contractor obligation, contractual obligation to mitigate all delays. As I said, he is obliged to mitigate his delays, but other delays, employer delay. If the employer is not taking action or decisions for six months, the contractor is obliged to pay half million dollar to mitigate his delays. Why? The contractor would do reasonable effort to mitigate other delay. And again, it depends on the drafting of the contract, which form of contract you are using. Okay, so in the JCT, an extension of time does not automatically entitle the contractor to financial compensation. Mostly the employer will grant EOT with no compensation, mostly. Okay, in the JCT, if the contractor can prove that the progress of work is being or is likely to be delayed by specific delay event, the contractor may be entitled to an extension of time EOT to complete the work and their why we are getting EOT as a contractor? We have more than 50% as a contractor to avoid delayed damages. What is the contractor's disaster? Delayed damages, being half million or 100K per day, this is the disaster. Okay, NEC form of contract. Under the latest NEC, which is four suite of contract, the contractor is entitled to extension of time and thereof relief from delayed damages and compensation on the occurrence of specific compensation event. So you have to go, this is capitalized, for the defined term and to see if you are entitled or not. In the NEC, the effect of COVID-19 may fall within the definition of compensation, which means my statement is that it's not necessary under NEC to get compensation. Of course, I'm an expert in the FedEx forms of contract, but I'm addressing in few slides the NEC and JCT but I never worked on the NEC and JCT practically. Okay, so neither party could prevent, stop the contractor completing the work. The contractor would have judge having small chance for occurring for the COVID-19. Okay, to conclude, if the relevant contract was entered into before this point, and if the impact of COVID-19 stops the contractor from completing the work when initial schedule, the contractor 
would have a strong argument. So what strong argument means? You have to prove it again. You have to prove it. So clause 60.1 in the NEC said an event which stops the contractor completing blah, 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 then you will be entitled for the extension of time. And this is 61.3 in the NEC. We have a project manager in the NEC. The project manager must determine if the contractor's notification is accepted as a compensation event or not, and then instruct the contractor to submit quotations which could impact the contract price and or completion date. So the FEDEC issued a memorandum regarding COVID-19. It has been issued, if I recall, uh, there is latest one issued last September, um, 2021, uh, but the earlier one, it was, I think, in May or June, um, 2019, something like that, or 20, okay. So what the, memor the memorandum said, you have to comply with applicable safety, mitigate, and employer is responsible for its personnel to comply with some extent of safety things. Now, getting into the scenarios, okay? Shortage of personnel and good. We are still under the FedEx forms of contract. I'll get you the conclusion due to time restrictions. I have till, I think, 11, 10. Okay. Scenario one, shortage of personnel and goods. Okay. So this, this is the clause which you may consider under the 1999 Rainbow Suite, which is 8.4D in the red, yellow, silver, and emerald. So what is what regarding the latest suite 2017? It is almost the same, okay? 8.5D. In the gold book, it is 9.3D. Okay, red book, contractor is entitled under subclause 8.4D. There is, you have to prove if you are looking for cost entitlement, it is very difficult for you. You have to find entitlement, etc. Okay. Fine. So scenario two is delay by austerity. So scenario one is uh, delay in personnel and goods. Scenario number one, delay by austerity. So you can go also to subclause 8.5 in the 1999 suite, 8.6 in the 2017 suite. In the gold book, again, no, 9.5. So scenario three, change in legislation or change in law. This is not applicable to all. Uh, jurisdictions and countries, but if there is a change in law uh, through the restrictions like what happened in, in Jordan, okay, the government start issuing things, regulations, legislation, laws changing here and there, you have to prove it, okay? The thing in this clause, which is 3.7 in 1999 suite and 3.6 in 2017 suite, the thing here, if you prove that there is a change in law or legislation, you may be entitled for cost plus extension of time. But it is, again, difficult to prove it. So why to claim? Because one of the most important obligations on the contractor to comply with applicable laws. I, ha I have to comply with applicable laws. Okay. Contractor claim. Uh, okay. These are the number of clauses. 13.7 in the 1999 suite, 13.6 in 2017 suite. So case of study, there were a lot of shutdowns in many countries and partial shutdown and lockdown, quarantined areas. Like in some countries in the MENA region, we have quarantined areas. If there is a lot of COVID-19 cases in this certain area, they will lock that area totally, no in, no out, okay? So my staff is in there. They are unable to come to the project. My project is there. I'm unable to do anything, okay? So, prevention principle, again, is very important here. Uh, the impossibility we explained, and these are the clauses. Um, now, what FedEx did in the new rainbow suite, just changed the name of force majeure to exceptional event, okay? Let us leave, uh, also there are some other modifications. Uh, let us get out of FedEx forms of contract and back to the civil law jurisdictions. So again, what is force majeure in civil law jurisdictions? Impossible to work. Either absolute, partially, timely. Okay, so what is exceptional event? If it is hard for you to work. This is exceptional event. Okay, let me talk legally now. Can the judge or court interfere into the contract in some civil law jurisdiction? 
Hello, it's Bacta Sant Servanda. What is Bacta Sant Servanda? Means we signed a contract. Both parties, we signed a contract. We agreed on these terms. Please, please don't interfere. Okay? No, I will interfere. Why? If there is a case, okay, um, that we have an exceptional event, then the court may interfere. Like if you have applied delay damages to the contractor, if you have a school, you have to complete it in, in March, and the commencement of the school is in, in September, and the contract admitted that he delayed the project for a couple of months. There was no damages on the, on the employer. Okay, there was a delay of two months, but no damages. Then why you are applying delayed damages? Because it's written in the contract. Then the contractor may go to the court and the court may interfere. It depends on the civil law jurisdiction. Again, okay. Uh, let me see how many slides are bending. Okay, I think I can make it. Okay, these are the conclusion of the four reasons. Um, beyond control and unforeseeable, etc. Not attributable to other party, etc., etc. Okay. So, again, emphasizing that in, in the new rainbow suite, there is exceptional event, no more force majeure. And please mind not limited to when you are reviewing the force majeure clause or exceptional event. So, force majeure in the old rainbow suite, it is 19.1. In the new rainbow suite, it's 18.1. Um, there, was, uh, there were some changes in the new rainbow suite. Okay, so what is employer argument? Again, could not reasonably have avoided or overcome. I'll tell you, Mr. Contractor, you could, if you follow the safety restriction, you could avoid this huge or drastic delays in the project. You could. I do understand there was an impact because of COVID-19, but it is not impossible to work. It is, it is hard for you to work. Implementation of HSSE. That's why in the new rainbow suite uh, of PEDEC 2017, there is emphasizing that the HSSE plan, which is safety plan, should be submitted for the project itself, not general one. Yeah? How to deal with it? Um, so we have to define the event, prevented the force majeure or exceptional event. So, of course, you have to issue, if you consider it as a force, a force majeure, you have to follow your contract. Whatever written, uh, written sorry, in the, in the particular condition, if it is NEC, JCT, etc. Okay, so I'm giving you some example from civil law jurisdiction. This is in Arabic. I'll just give you a brief about it. This is in Jordan, which said that between date X and date Y, um, all contractor will get extension of time, and they said the phrase force majeure. The first question, uh, we as a contracts directors, we are looking into the ABC in any case, okay? You are telling me that you are, you are having a force majeure clause, okay? Are you authorized to, to do that as, as a ministry of blah, 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 or as a governmental um, department? Are you authorized to say that or the government itself should say that? This is the first question. So in this case, they said, we will give all contractor extension of time, anyone, objecting of course with no cost anyone objecting our decision then the eot itself cancelled automatically for your case okay certain court designated for construction claims in saudi arabia okay so saudi arabia is big, the biggest market now in the gcc region so what happened for COVID-19? You know, in, in, in Saudi, we don't have civil law jurisdiction. By the way, they are writing civil law jurisdiction now. I have a lot of um, colleagues, they are wake, working in the legal firm, and um, I am aware, but not sure, uh, I'm aware that they are writing civil law jurisdiction. So we have Sharia law in Saudi. So all countries, we have civil law jurisdiction and common law, then we have Sharia law. So what, what happened in Saudi Arabia? Ministry of Finance, they issued and a decision regarding COVID-19, Ministry of Finance is the client for most of the governmental project. Okay, we are talking about billions of Saudi real. Okay, they said uh, if it is if the delay is related to exceptional event or delay by government or authorities, um, if it is beyond control, if there is suspension 
or for reasons, again, beyond control, then you will get extension of time. So I took a snap from the high court in Saudi, high court, what the high court said regarding COVID-19. I catch up all these legal things and I started making claim for myself as a consultant and I succeeded in the most difficult jurisdiction, which is Saudi Arabia, in many claims with the government based on their high court decision, okay? So if you have concrete foundation, legitimate ground, then things will be fine, okay? If as step one, you don't have a stand, you don't have a legitimate ground or foundation, you are a loser. You are a loser. You are not competent. You are incompetent. Okay. So in this one, as long as it is in Arabic, it said when to consider COVID-19 as force majeure, when to consider it as exceptional event. I start researching, looking for what is force majeure in Saudi system. Then I, I found it is not well defined like other jurisdiction. So in this, in this day, defined what are the uh, prerequisites for force majeure and exceptional event. Okay, so in Singapore, uh, the TMA, which is Temporary Measure Act, uh, they established this after COVID-19, it said that from 1st February, the delayed damages, DD means delayed damages, not payable after this, uh, but they, if I recall, they added till one month after the end of this circumstances. And they encouraged the alternative dispute resolution. Also in France, they talked about uh, liquidated, uh, liquidated sorry, damages and termination effects. They actually reconsidered, or let me say, neutralized, neutralized uh, and reconsidered from March 2020. Okay, so they encouraged in France also the alternative dispute resolution. Of course, I'm not giving you the big picture for each jurisdiction. Um, finally, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm telling you the conclusion from my uh, researches. Okay, so there is an option also in FedEx forms of contract, which, which is called the optional uh, termination. So if for certain duration, there is a suspension or blah, 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 then there will be a right for parties to issue a determination. As I said, the most difficult claim is the disruption claim. I have done a lot of disruption claims, okay, in many jurisdictions. Uh, I could say that partially I succeeded in some of it, okay? It is very difficult to prove that KBI has been reduced because of the employer and beyond my control. So disruption claims is about loss of KBI productivity to be translated to time and cost, um, not, easy, not easy to prove. Acceleration, oh, what is acceleration? What is this related to COVID-19? I start mixing up or what? Okay. I had some strange claims or, or cases about acceleration. You know, acceleration can be issued as a variation. It can be a value engineering by uh, the contractor in general. And there is implied acceleration. One of the most, let me not say challenging claim, funny claims. It was in, in one project in Jordan, which the contractor was expert and he start doing an implied acceleration, which is, we call it in the common law, constructive acceleration. But there are six prerequisites to succeed in constructive acceleration. Okay, so what are they? Okay. These are like, it is only in the USA doctrine, this constructive acceleration is crystal. It is crystal only in the USA doctrine. So what are the prerequisites to succeed in implied acceleration for the project? The first one, there should be a delay in titling for EOT. Second one, you submitted timely notice. Third one, engineer refusal or delayed or failure to grant EOT. Then engineers implied instruction to complete. I was telling you, complete timely, complete timely, no EOT, etc. Then contractors notice that engineer action is a direction of acceleration then contractor really accelerated the work, okay? So does that mean these types of claims only successful in the US? No, on some cases, they could convince uh, the judge or the court that they have this case, 
So examining this under common law, in Australian law, uh, in, in UK not recognized, and in India not recognized, in the civil law jurisdiction also all not recognized. I'm putting also alternative in the UAE, 246, good faith, 282 in Egypt, um, also in Brazil. Okay. So I think my time is over and my slides are over. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and you got some um, added value information uh, regarding COVID-19 in civil law jurisdiction. Um, do we have any question or I'm running out of time? One more minute. I have, there is one more speaker. Yeah. yeah thank you, Amir. That was yeah. um, some very detailed slides and thank you very much.